Here we are. Okay. Mm. All right. This is Podcast Dad Stuff. It's April 17th. It's 10 p.m. We're in the studio. Attendees, it's me, uh, Jesse. I am actually your host. Uh, we're talking about dad stuff. Um, really nothing overly complicated. You know, first time dads out there, you might need some advice, help. You might have questions. I am too a first time dad. Every time you have a kid, you're always a first time dad. And uh, without further ado, here we go. All right, so look, things we need to do before little one gets here. Uh, maternity leave from work. Not a lot of people have looked into this. Uh, I certainly did because it's a little bit different for the military, but for civilian folks, uh, reach out to your HR. Let them know that you and yours are expecting. Uh, this will allow them to better plan things in your absence. It'll also allow them to do some research on your behalf to find out what you are allowed to take as far as paid vacation time in some instances and also they might articulate to you what are your limitations and what are the maximum things that you can do within your insurance so allowing the hr to work for you which is actually their job they'll work for you find out the different things that you can do within that company as far as having your wife um, give birth and then you being a secondary caregiver you're there um, it's absolutely needed I am so glad that the military finally found a, a way to enable the secondary caregiver to be with their significant other more than just two weeks or 21 days it is now 22 weeks in the military 22 weeks of paid vacation where whether your wife gave um, the traditional way of vaginal birth or a C-section, you are still going to have 22 days. That is, or not 22 weeks. It's a, it's a phenomenal idea. I am all for it because before my firstborn, I was, I was given like two weeks. Like, you know what you do in two weeks when you have a baby and your wife had a c-section you don't do you can't you can't put anything in place so when you leave after two weeks going back to your work that you have to be at there's just not you just can't have a foundation or routine built up and your wife who just had a c-section can't like for for some wives out there who had c-sections they can't just pick up the baby you know when, when they pass out they put the baby down they can't just pick up the baby you need to be there to pick up the baby so feeding can happen or maybe the wife just wants to hold the baby someone wants to hold the baby you know you need to be there to physically do things so the wife who had a c-section but in even some cases like a vaginal birth where the walls get torn up and they have to get surgery to like put everything back in place they still can't do normal stuff so i'm so glad that the military stepped up or the people who make laws finally like oh that's a good idea finally stepped up and changed that for for us because we we look dads moms we want to be there we want to do the parent part because well it's what we dreamed of you know so yeah for, for you civilians out there reach out to your hr let them know that that you're going to be a father your significant other your wife is expecting to have a child at this time frame it gives them time to really plot a course or like a way ahead for not just you but in your absence like what that workload is going to look for somebody else it allows you to prepare you know different checkpoints for you to pass on the work that you're working on if you have projects that way the ball doesn't get dropped on that end so when you come back after your vacation time with your baby and wife like nothing nothing was was set back it's all moving forward for you military folks congrats those 22 weeks live it up i never got to experience that in my 20 years um but for you young bucks out there congrats a big deal take advantage of it be with your be with your wife be with your kid be happy about it 
So the next thing, um, take some classes. For a lot of folks out there, especially you really young cats out there, when you're having kids at age, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, you know what I mean. The young kids, the young adults who are about to be a brand new parent, there's nothing wrong with taking classes. And for you, you old folks out there, you know, for you old folks who never held a baby in your life and you're in your 40s, there's still nothing wrong with taking classes out there to get familiar with one, one how to hold a baby. You know, like some people just don't know how to hold a baby, how to support the neck so the head doesn't just, because, you know, there's no strength in that neck as a baby. Um, how to change the diaper, how to swaddle, uh, how to bathe the baby, how to feed the baby. Um, how to put the baby down How to pick the baby up There's like a lot of different things that That if you haven't been Introduced to it before It's going to be a foreign concept You don't So to speak You don't want to drop that ball uh, I highly encourage classes For me I never really did classes With the Well with the exception of doing First aid and resuscitation Which are classes that I have to do In the military but uh, other than that, I really just been a natural dad in that aspect of one, changing diapers, how to pick up a baby, swaddling, um, how to pick a baby up, put it down, like the different things that you do on a day-to-day basis with a baby. I never really needed to take classes. I just knew how to do it. And I think, I think for a lot of people out there, like your dad instincts will kick in. It's a real thing, man. It's a real thing when you, when you're holding your baby. And you look in their eyes if it's if when it opens, you know, when it opens, you see their eyes bent. Shit, you did that. You, it's a blessing. You're gonna do everything in your power to ensure that that little miracle grows up to be just as strong, if not stronger than you. And trust me, your dad instincts will automatically kick in. So don't, like I'm saying, don't not take classes. Take classes, get familiar with it, because the more familiar you are with the circumstance, the easier it is going to be for you. But if you don't take classes, like, it, look, you don't feel like you're not going to know how to dad. You're going to be just fine. Uh, teamwork. All right. Teamwork. Teamwork. Line up your time with your wife. So so you're pretty much there step by step. What I mean by that is there's going to be appointments that are popping up. You're going to want to be there for all of them, or if not most of them, because you can't be there for all of them, but be there for most of them, especially the real important ones when you, you know, like ultrasound, um, planning when things are going to happen with the OBGYN, like you want to be there for all that because you're the dad, plain and simple. Um, It gets a lot easier too when when you start this process of just being involved with this part like the pre-birth because once 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 the baby comes out man it's full steam ahead like the, the stoplights are all green and you have to get there wherever there is usually sometimes there is just you know you have no diapers well if you would have been planning well ahead of time it would have been a natural thing for you just to keep everything stocked up um I know for me, like I'm just watching my wife ramsack toilet paper for <laughs> leading up to our second child's birth. I don't know what was going on, but man, she was ramsacking toilet paper. You know what's funny is like the first birth that we had in Demi, I had, I had, I had a house. Um, she had moved in. I had a storage of toilet paper that I had purchased from Costco. I don't know how many was in there, but one day, it was like three months later, and I probably only used up like two rolls of them things. One day after three months, I walked down there to go get toilet paper. There's none, and I'm like, Alyssa, what is going on? And she's like, every time I go pee, you know, it's just a flood zone up in there. I'm like, come on, bruh. Come on, bruh. But yeah, uh, so from that point on, I learned every time I go to Costco, which is every usually every week every two weeks i'm gonna go pick up some rolls or or take an inventory stock of things that way when i do get there i know for a fact i need toilet paper because we're gonna run out in a week so stuff like that being there every step of the way we synced up our calendars uh, she sends me calendar invites 
all the time now. I color code them so I know it's her. Um, I also color code them and put them in different categories depending on what it is and how important it might be. That way I, I'm i not reacting. I can be reactive and just be there when I need to be there. That's really helped out a lot. Um, yeah, man, teamwork. Teamwork goes a long way. She can't do everything. You certainly can't do everything. Um, yeah, another thing like teamwork, you're going to have to give up some things. I had a Toyota Tacoma that I love very much. Um, I had to get that up because when you put in that baby seat and it's backwards facing, it took up more room than I thought it would take up. And it really killed the leg room for whoever was sitting the passenger side. I'm a short fella, but but if you're on the passenger side and you're six foot, like your knees are going to be capped off. So I turned that in. I got a, a Ram, a 1500 Ram. Uh, had a lot of has a lot of space. Nobody's complaining about leg room. But that's one of those things. Like as we sat down and we're just thinking of like different things that need to happen. Um, that was one of the conversations that we had to have is like what sort of vehicles are we going to need to facilitate a easier time traveling anywhere so yeah so teamwork man do that uh, i'm trying to keep this short but notes okay notes except all free stuff except all free stuff any free stuff um cook meals diapers i'm telling you um there was one time when we received a thing of lasagna. My wife doesn't really eat beef, but I do. Uh, she had her safe section. So while she was like resting, I would be with the baby. I couldn't really like cook or anything because I had the baby and I just like holding the baby. But I had lasagna, so I would just cut that thing up, put a microwave, pop that in, eat that real quick, get back to baby duties. Like nobody messes beat or a step for that week. So that was real helpful. It was like free food, especially when your wife got a C-section. Like she ain't trying to get up. Uh, you ain't got time to really be cooking like the way you used to cook. Take the free food. Free diapers. You're going to go through them. Look, when, when it's your first one or second one or third one, no matter how many of you have had, there's a, a month in there where it's like every two hours you gotta change the diaper you're gonna go through diapers you're gonna go through baby wipes and it's every like two hours every time the baby feeds change the diaper uh, the last thing you want is any sort of infection going in or out you know like you just don't want you just don't want to risk it change that diaper accept all diapers uh, don't be afraid to ask questions call your doctor pre or post birth um I got lucky because I have friends that are actually working in the NICU. So I would just blow them up with texts every now and then if I had a question pre or post or during birth, you know, just so I had a little bit of peace of mind. A lot of stuff is on Google. Um, doesn't mean it's always right, but a lot of stuff is on Google. Now, for, from from a perspective of what you can do right now that is actionable. Um, look, if you don't want to take classes because some of them like cost money for... The resuscitation class, you can actually go to your local fire station and have them show you how to do like first aid on an infant. They have the dolls, they have all the equipment. They'll show you how to do it. It's not like a, it's not a big muscle movement for them to do it. And they're probably, it's probably within like their training plan to actually go through that on a weekly, annual. I don't know how many, how many times they do it a year, but it's something that they're capable of doing and they will be more than happy to show you talk to your okay another thing that you can do is talk to your hr look if you just clicked onto this and there's nothing else you took from this if you're working for a company talk to your hr about what are your benefits regarding being a secondary caregiver Regarding being a dad who is going to have a baby at some point in time. Ask that HR what they can do for you. So, nothing else. If there's nothing else to take from this, there is a free class out there that you can go get at your fire station. And two, um, talk to your HR. They'll put you in a path forward. Next, next agenda or next conversation. Um... I think I think it's only proper to do like a week prior to little person coming in or coming up or showing up. 
that'd be a good that'd be a good one. Cause um, depending depending on your wife, it could be challenging. <laughs> or super easy. We don't know. But yeah, so look, I'm your host. I'm Jesse. I'm out here just talking about dad stuff. It's April 17th. There's a lot of things that you can do as a first time dad or a second, third time dad. It doesn't get any it's not easy being a first time dad it can be easier and i hope this helped you along the way and if it does or doesn't you got any questions feel free to comment if you think this helped you or it can also help somebody else send it to them share it um like subscribe all that jazz other than that um like i said it's past 10 so i'm gonna go to bed for you that are watch the warriors game it's gonna be one of the two deuces